Markets are interesting. You never really know what you're gonna get. <laughs> I get a lot of comments on my work. Most of them are polite conversation or compliments, which I totally appreciate. And sometimes people are asking me questions about what particular pieces are for. I get a lot of comments on this particular type of piece. And a lot of people have the same exact question. Are these used for soap? To which I have to reply, no, they're actually oil bottles, which is equally cool, but you know, not the same thing. And, but that got me thinking. I could totally make soap bottles, so I decided to go for it. Hello and welcome to my channel. Let me show you how I made these really cool soap bottles. I used about a pound and a half of clay for these and I threw them on the wheel. That is my preferred method for making just about everything pottery. <laughs> I wanted to go for a really rounded shape for these. I really like round pots and since they're just sitting on the counter and don't need to be carried around like my oil bottles, I really could go rounded with these. I decided to use a dark clay for these because I like the contrast between bright underglaze and darker clay. You'll see how that looks a bit later. I really like the contrast between lighter clay and bright underglaze as well, but I felt like doing dark clay for these. <laughs> That's really the reason I used dark clay because I felt like it. As I was throwing these, I centered the clay by coning up and then down, and I opened the clay just a few inches, not too wide. I then pulled up the walls into a somewhat narrow cylinder, and since I wouldn't be shaping these, I made sure to make the walls not too thin. Then I took a wet sponge on the inside of my cylinder and started pushing out the walls of the cylinder to shape it. This part has to be done with extra care so as not to go too fast, or with an uneven pressure that makes for a wonky pot. I also needed to be careful not to make the top of the pot too wide as that needs to be narrow in the end. Once the main body of the pot was sufficiently rounded, I moved on to coloring the rim or making it narrower. I made the opening for these bottles the width that I thought was sufficient, but as you'll see later, I ended up having to fix some of them when they were drier. That's because I was very eager to start this project and I didn't wait for the pumps and corks that I ordered to arrive before I started throwing them. So I had to kind of guess to begin with and uh, it's okay. It all worked out in the end. <laughs> when I had the pots just how I wanted them, I also cleaned up the bottom edge with one of my tools so that way I didn't need to trim these at all. I just smoothed them with a sponge after I wired them off the bat. I then repeated this same process over and over to make a whole little collection of bottles. They all started out the same weight of clay, but I did not throw them all identically. If you have seen any of my other videos, you know that I don't really ever make the same pot twice. I use different shapes, different colors, and different carvings to make my pieces each different. I think that makes it more interesting to purchase as you can choose the one that suits you best, but the real reason I do it is because it's more interesting for me as the maker. I admire people who can make the same exact piece over and over. That kind of precision is awesome, but I have no desire to do that. <laughs> I have no desire to do that with my own work. I really enjoy switching it up. I love variety and so all these are different and that's intentional. <laughs> After they dried for a day or so, and I'd wire them off the bat, and then smooth the bottom with a sponge, which I don't actually show here, but imagine it. I added underglaze to them. Some got one color, others got two, and again, I like variety. And you may notice that these pots are a completely different shape than I started out with. That's because they're not the same pots. These ones are actually going to be little salt cellars that will be there featured in their own video. But I'm using the footage here because I apparently forgot to record me underglazing the soap bottles. So um, use your imagination. <laughs> I use the same process for underglazing the soap bottles as these salt cellars. So just imagine that happening. All right. By this point, the corks and pumps had arrived in the mail. And I realized that the openings in some of the bottles were far too small. So I centered them back on the wheel and cut the openings bigger. Problem solved. <laughs> it's better not to make the mistake in the first place, but you know, 
again, I just wanted to start the project. All right, then it was on to my second favorite part. Throwing is my favorite, but carving is a close second. This particular carving technique is called Scrafito, and it shows up in several of my videos as I really like it. I have been enjoying this technique a lot lately, so there will be quite a bit more Scrafito in future videos as well. Scrafito is just putting down a color, which is underglaze in this case, and then carving or scratching back some of the color to make a design and reveal the clay underneath. It's really not that hard, and it ends up looking awesome. I did all different designs on these pots, again, for variety. My friend asked me the other day how I come up with all the different designs I do. I kind of felt like I should have some like artsy answer, like I draw inspiration from the textures and designs in nature. But I told her the real answer, which is I just make it up as I go. Now I do some nature inspired pieces with leaves or flowers and I do more geometric designs too, but I don't plan any of it ahead of time. I uh, literally pick up each piece as I'm ready to carve it, <laughs> look at it and think through what would look best for about eh, 15 to 30 seconds, and then I just go for it. I don't even plan out the whole design, guys. So I generally start with one part, like a flower, or maybe I decide on triangles going around, and then I build on it from there. I think that's probably not the usual recommended method, but I find it relaxing and it's a great way to not stress it. I have some uh, perfectionistic tendencies, and this is a great way for me to combat it. I don't stress it, I don't overthink it, I just do it. If I mess it up too bad, I can always throw it in the reclaim bucket, but you know, thankfully I rarely have to do that. And look how good these look already. My gosh, look how awesome they look all done. Well, done with the carving, they still have a long way to go. Really love the bright colors against the darker clay, it just looks so awesome. Then I left them to dry for a couple of weeks. If you don't let them dry all the way, they will explode in the kiln. So while this is a hands-off step, it is very important. Once they were all bone dry, fully dry, I loaded them into my kiln for the first firing. Since these don't have any glaze at this point, it doesn't matter if they touch each other in the kiln. So I pack them all in tightly. And here they are after the bisque firing. They look basically the same as when they went in but now they're all hardened and ready for glazing. I don't like glazing. <laughs> I would so much rather be doing just about any other step in the process. But when I do scrafito like I did with these pots, I can just dip them in clear and call it a day. So much easier than brush on glaze or deciding on colors and combos and all that. So maybe that's why I've been doing more scrafito lately. <laughs> it's just easier on the glazing, I don't know. Anyway, to glaze these, I stirred the glaze, you gotta mix it up, and then I poured the clear glaze on the inside, made sure the inside was fully coated by turning it around, and then poured the excess glaze out, and yes, I mess this up every time, so I then wiped them off <laughs> to not have thick spots, and then for the outside, I just gave them a quick dip, and I was done. I just glazed down to the bottom of the underglaze, which was about an inch or so above the base, so the bottom part of the pot, up about an inch from the base, is raw clay, which makes a nice contrast with the glaze, as that won't be shiny. And it was also easier, gave me a spot to hold onto the pot, and I wasn't having to glaze all the way to the base. Then they went back into the kiln, looking all white and boring because of the glaze, but they'll look great after the firing. The glaze firing is an even hotter temperature than the bisque firing, and takes longer. Anyway, basically just takes all day, and then it takes most of the day to cool, so it takes a little bit, and the anticipation is rough. A lot of potters relate this to Christmas morning, just having to like wait and wait. But here they are after the final firing. They look so good. I love how vibrant and shiny the colors look. I love all the designs and how each one is different.
After unloading them from the kiln, I then added the pumps and corks. At this point, they were looking really good. And I could have stopped here, but I wasn't really loving how high the corks were sitting in the bottle. Clay shrunk more than I anticipated, and it just looked a little weird with the corks sticking out that far. Plus, they were a little hard to put in. So I came up with a uh, creative solution. <laughs> with the cork connected to the pump, I attached that all to the drill. And then while spinning the drill, I sanded the cork narrower with my Dremel tool. A little hard to coordinate with two tools and two hands, but it worked out. I also sanded them smoother with a higher grit sandpaper, and then I wiped them down as this was quite messy. It may be a weird way to do it, but it worked quite well, and the bottles look so much better with the cork sitting lower. It was easy to add the pumps and the cork. I just cut the plastic straw part to fit the bottle, and it was good to go. They look so good. Here they all are, and I would love to know which one is your favorite. I'm not even sure I could pick a favorite. They just all look so good. I have got another market this weekend, and then another one next weekend, and like three more over the summer. <laughs> so um, these are going to look so good on my tables. I wonder if I'll get anyone asking if they're oil bottles, though. That would be really funny. <laughs> Thanks for watching and go check out how I actually made the oil bottles here. I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.